this is the time when people could just calm down and, as you say, reflect on their lives. You know, first off, I wanted to say thank you for getting on um, this podcast and Creative Haven. I really love your work. Your photography is amazing just because you don't use a lot of post-production. And so a lot of the lighting and the colors that you capture is done in camera. And it's just so impressive because of the emotions that you invoke from the viewer. And it's so cinematic. Um, and I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. And so seeing it in your work, uh, especially with, I love the sets in, in act and um, I love the stuff that you've done with Testament of Love in Korea. It, it, uh -huh. it has these great, scenes it looks like a storyboard and uh, so i just wanted to say big fan you're amazing at your craft and we just love for you to uh kind of tell um us a little bit more about yourself and actually a moment in your life that you're the most proud of well first of all thank you for 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 having me and i really yeah. really appreciate it especially in these you know slightly difficult while well, quite difficult times and it's really um wonderful to speak with another creative and, um, you know, share thoughts and ideas or just speak about my work. Is this photography related or any moment? In any mind? moment. Yeah. Any moment. It doesn't even have to be photography. Uh, giving birth to my first son. It sounds a bit Love cliche, it. doesn't it? <laughs> oh God. But yeah, no, that was, that was, a moment. well, I was in, in a very difficult labor for a very, very mm. long time. And, um, it went on, for hours and hours and the midwife kind of left and came back again. And it was like, you're still here. Oh, uh, wow. Unfortunately, I, I did end up having a, a cesarean, um, mm. but I felt that I tried my hardest and yeah, it was just wonderful to know that I could do it and go through with it and rise above it. And at the end of it, have a, a gorgeous little boy who's, very, very healthy. Yeah. That is, that is 12 years ago now. So that's amazing. <laughs> it's <all> that <laughs> how, what, how was the transition going from, you know, the independent creative artist into a mother? You know what? I was, I, well, I think one regret I do have is I never took time off mm -hmm. to be with him, like maternity leave that, you know, if you, if you're working full time or if, if you're in a, in a, well, in like a full time job, you'll get automatically between, oh, it depends which country you're from, but anything from three months to, I think, nearly a year. Mm. And I never had that. And I was always incredibly focused on my work, on my mm -hmm. working on my personal projects, that even when he was born and he was very little and I was breastfeeding, I, I didn't stop. So I just carried on. Mm. And I think I'm in that a uh, very fortunate position where my husband is also a photographer. Mm -hmm. So the two of us, we jungled it between us. So it wasn't like I had to just stop everything and give all my attention purely to him. I was able to carry on in a very creative way and carry on shooting and producing my own projects. So I didn't, but I do regret not, I do regret a little bit just, um, not taking a break. Not yeah, time. I feel I feel like I, I should have just stopped and just totally focused on him, which I never did, and I envy other mothers that now do do that. Does um, he have you have you ever felt that coming from him as a a complaint, or is it something that you feel personally about? No, no complaint from him. He wouldn't remember that. <laughs> uh, no, it's just personally. It's just I'm incredibly driven. And I mm -hmm. think it's, I find it hard to stop, but it's, it's just inside me that I have to keep, keep going and keep having a project and keep producing or keep coming up with ideas or researching on a project. And that's kind of what keeps me um, alive. Yes. Uh, you know, it just, I find myself so buoyant with that. And if I were to put that on hold and concentrate fully, like 
hundred percent on just being a mother, even for a short time, I, I, I would find that a little bit harder, mm. but I, I, but I, it doesn't mean that I wasn't with him. I was still breastfeeding for a long time and gave him a lot of my attention. And, you know, I was obviously still the mother and with him, yeah, I work from home. So, and newborn babies sleep a lot of the time. Anyway, it was just adjusting as, as he was growing up and with my second son as well. Well, I think that for a lot of creatives, I feel the same way. Uh, creativity and expressing ourselves keeps us happy, uh, keeps us sane, keeps us um, aware and, and self-aware and just present in life or else our mind's going to just be running all over the place. And yeah. that presence and that happiness uh, shows in your the way that you parent. And being, happy, being a happy mother is better than having a stressed, disappointed, regretful mother that didn't get to express herself creatively and same thing with just a lot of my my other friends yeah of course i mean i think i think that uh it talking to other people who aren't creative to tell them the idea of ex- artistic expression saved my life some people don't understand it um, but there's just so many stories so many people i've interviewed on this podcast that where music has healed them art has healed them film has been healed them dance has healed them and it's it's it shows in our work um, and it also shows in your work, the emotions that you convey in your work, it's almost like therapy. And mm. I feel that, you know, with a lot of photography and filmmaking, there's this, I would say a little, uh, uh, you know, bond between the two, uh, just because yeah, of the idea of framing, um, mm-hmm. of setting up the, the scene, production design, and even hearing your, your process, uh, you go through a storyboarding phase, you have a large team, you have grip trucks, it sounds like, yeah, and yeah. You, you go through the whole process beforehand. And then you spend about a month or two working on uh, the, the idea. And so I was going to ask you, you know, d- even in, during the time like this, do you schedule your time for creativity? Or does the ideation um, come out of doing something random? Like, do you like to say, okay, from nine to 12, I'm going to be creative? Or do you like to just live free for one day and then for, if, if the idea pops up, then you act on it? Oh, it's definitely not nine to five. No, it's, it's, it's um, taking each day as it comes. And mm. so far in my whole career, you know, whenever I've finished a project, which can take between one and three years, <laughs> um, I always felt like, okay, I'm going to have a little break now. I'm just going to relax about this and just kind of calm down and maybe have a month or two off and just enjoy being. And normally when that happens, I, Mm -hmm. a a new fresh idea pops in my head and I just think, oh, I love that. Okay. I've got to do it. And I, you know, I jump into a new project Mm -hmm. straight away. And um, this is the first time ever it's been now two or three months where, if I'm really honest, <laughs> I've had no ideas. I'm, mm. I'm, I, I've not known this situation ever. And um, it's a very strange feeling because I normally love to get excited by something and just throw myself into a project. And um, often I spend the evenings after dinner, going back and researching and thinking about it. And it's, it's very unfamiliar to me. So now being stuck at home in this situation um, with COVID-19, I feel, um, well, it's only been two days for us, so it's been, (laughs) but I'm worried I'm going to start feeling trapped. I mean, we can still go outside and we still have a lot of freedom. Um, we don't have to write notes or, or have letters prepared, the reason why we're going out, but I think that may come our way. But I feel, I wish I had a project that I'm really concentrating on because this would be mm. the best time to use that, use this total downtime of researching, organizing um, a new project, which I'm not, not doing right now. And funny enough, before we had this lockdown, I actually uh, spent three months organizing a smaller shoot and I was ready to shoot it. However, we, we had the lockdown coming in and I had, to, I had to kind of, I'm not saying canceling because I will do it, I will shoot it, but we had to postpone it. And right now I've put a date 
in the diary for June because I think I'm hoping that I'm being realistic. I didn't want to say April because um, I thought that might be too soon. So mm-hmm. I had to contact everybody and my whole team and um, postpone it till June. So that was already ready in preparation, ready to go. And just all, everything was organized. It's all going to studio for two days. And as I said, it was a small project. So it was something I was looking forward to. And now, um, now I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to spend this time and think of something, but I think yeah. it, it's when you force it, I think it doesn't naturally come. So I think I need, I need to let it come to me and, and, and stay open-minded and positive. Yeah, no, I, I agree. It's, it's, I'm glad we're getting into this conversation because I think the, the lockdown, especially here in, in LA, since this is a very creative city, um, a lot of my friends are either dancers, uh, filmmakers, um, influencers, digital marketers, or, or entrepreneurs. And a lot of people are trying to use this time, of course, to do live streams and Instagram, online courses, masterminds, um, a group videos about uh, how to deal with this uh, situation and getting really creative online. Though I do see a lot of people getting the cabin fever already. And Mm -hmm. I almost feel it's because of the environment. And I think that when we're forced inside, um, the irony is is that, yes, we have a creative um, environment inside of our house because that's how we like to create sometimes it's inside of our house. But we love the freedom the freedom to be able to escape and yeah. able to get into nature, to travel, to work with other yeah. people. And that freedom has been taken out of the, the equation. And so mm-hmm. now we're kind of forced in an environment, our own environment to create, though it's, it's the, for some weird, funny reason, the freedom is gone. And yeah. it's almost taking away from that creative flow. And so in, in, in your environment right now, when you're here at home, you're in the lockdown, like, how do you like to have your environment to come up with an idea? Even before you, you, you had this idealist phase, do you like to have music playing? Do you like to just play with your children? Is it something when you spend time by yourself or with family? Uh, what is that time where you're just being? To get ideas, there's nothing really specific um i mean ideas just pop into my head it could be for example i did a project on feral children Mm -hmm. um and it was a book i read by a woman called marina chapman who was a feral child she was living in colombia and she was um kidnapped drugged and thrown into a jungle and then lived by herself Mm. copying the behavior of capuchin monkeys for about four years and she was about 10 years old and I read this book and I thought, no, this, this can't be possible. No way. Um, you know, a, a, a young girl living in the jungle by herself, how can she survive? And I started researching other feral children stories and there were lots of other different cases. And um, so that was one project, for example. And then my other project, which was... Um, my latest project on Old Father Thames, which is creating historical or recreating historical stories along the River Thames, mm-hmm. um, dating back to 18th century and, you know, even possibly 15 years ago, um, was just me going out with my family, mudlarking at low tide. Mudlarking is when you um, go out and at low tide and you put on... Um, your Wellington boots, because it's normally very muddy. Mm -hmm. And you often find 100-year-old coins or little artifacts, and you often do find something just sitting there, like little treasures along the River Thames. And I just thought, oh, my God, there's so much history here. And modlarking is something that's been going on for centuries. Mm -hmm. Um, That I start off with that particular image of I recreated children of poetry stricken children mudlarking at low tide who are in rags, dressed in rags, because that's what they used to do. The, the poorest of the poor would go out and just try and find coal or wool or anything they can get their hands on to either use themselves or to sell. And that started a three year long project. So my mm. ideas do come from 
lots of different uh, resources or places that I, I can't really pinpoint one particular thing. I certainly don't sit on my own in front of a computer and think, what am I going to do next? It just, <laughs> it just, as I say, it naturally flows, but it hasn't yeah. for the past two, three months. And it's, um, maybe, maybe I'll do something on COVID-19, um, on the coronavirus, yeah, virus. Yeah. You know, someone told me a really interesting idea the other day that this old ladies, what was in the old ladies in the, um, what do you call it? Um, Nursing home. Nursing home, and yeah. Were, yeah, nursing home. And they, were, and they were all together. And for some reason, money was going around. Someone owed somebody money or somebody bought something and everybody had to give the money to this old lady. And the daughter said to her, oh, you, you much, really shouldn't touch th- this money because you don't know, you know who's been touching it and if they've got the virus. So she then washed it in a washing machine and then she hung it up on a washing line. <laughs> And she took a picture of this, of all these dollars hanging on a washing line. And I thought, actually, there's something really interesting there. That that's sort of sparked one idea um, yeah. that that might lead on to other ideas. Who who knows? No, I love it. I think it's 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 finding inspiration in other uh, other things outside of photography. You know, it's it's from books. It's from activities you have with your family. It's from stories that you read online, and I've learned from a lot of creative people, even myself, that you can't just find inspiration within your craft. Like if I'm a filmmaker, I just can't keep watching films. Um, I actually find a lot of inspiration in music, in martial arts, in Mm -hmm. nature. And I see that with a lot of uh, creatives as well and how creativity really comes from all sorts of uh, parts of life. It doesn't even have to be um, art or creativity. You could some people can have an idea from cooking food, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and or taking a shower. And I think it's the idea yeah. of maybe clearing the mind and allowing it to come in and acting on it. Um, yeah. And do you feel that with your work, since it is so cinematic, that movies have influenced? It? Did you have any favorite movie directors or films that you've that you've seen in your life, or was it more? that your vision for all of these just happens to be looking like a cinematic storyboard? No, there is no, I mean, I watch a lot of films and I, I enjoy films, but it, it's not one, I couldn't pinpoint one film spe- specifically that inspired me to shoot a project. It mm-hmm. was, I think, my background started off in advertising. Mm-hmm. And I worked as a photographic assistant for five years for different photographers, and I learned a lot about lighting. And I, what I found really interesting is that you can take a really mundane situation or um, a, a visual thing in front of you and then create this magical lighting around it. And it's suddenly like, wow, it comes alive. It's like, mm-hmm. it, it's incredible. And so lighting has always been my, my thing. And, and I mean, photography is very much about storytelling just like, like film is. And my first project that I ever produced was when I was going through therapy. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I was looking into my past, not that I had a difficult past, but there were certain things that happened in my past that were a little bit unusual at the time. So I was doing therapy and thinking about a lot of my teenage years. And I was a very awkward teenager. And suddenly I started without realizing shooting this whole long big quite a big project project titled teenage stories recreating mm-hmm. scenes from my family life from my childhood teenage memories and that's that was my first project so it was yeah it, and it carried my next few projects were also digging into the past you know relationships with one, the other one was called Mother and Daughter mm-hmm. um, or Mothers and Daughters. So it was about the relationship I had with my mother and my mother had with her mother. So that was also a project. And then the Awkward Teenage Years called Awkward. And then after about five years of um, recreating stories from the past, I felt I uh, had enough. And <laughs> I, sh- I, I had shed my skin. I don't know if you can say it like that, but... Um, 
I, I felt like I just had to do something completely different. Mm-hmm. And that's when I concentrated more on uh, social issues with the sex workers, feral mm-hmm. children. I did a project on blind people because one of my mm-hmm. biggest fears is to become blind. And oh, wow. what it must be like to be blind because then how can you take pictures? And I interviewed Oof. people. And yeah, and then it was it just kind of spiraled from there, just lots of different projects. There was always something that I was just totally fascinated in. And um, the thing is with my projects, I don't create them very fast. It's, it's, there's a huge process to it. Mm-hmm. And because I, um, it's first and foremost, I have to feel confident about the idea because once I get this seed of an idea into my head, I, I know it will take me a long time to create it. Mm-hmm. Um, and each image has its own individual story and that these individual stories then are produced into a, made into a project. And each project is about between probably 15 and 22 images, n- not more than that. Um, But because I use so much lighting and my setups are quite big and very cinematic and normally I hire locations and actors and set, possibly set builders or set designers. And I don't have a producer, so I do it all myself because it's self-funded. That it does, each project does take a long time. But Mm. I, there's, there's no client, there's no deadline. It's kind of, I just love it. I just enjoy it. And, um, that's the best part is actually the whole pro- process leading up to the photo shoot itself. Um, yeah. which I, I really enjoy that process. And, and I can see it, it just looking at your photos, especially with blind, uh, the way that you use light and saturation and, and contrast compared to your other photos um, and how you're able to create these sets and, I, I know that beforehand you storyboard a lot of this and you know your shots. So you you know, I, I want to use a, let's say, a 24 lens uh, wide for this particular person in this setting. Or, and, and what I'm just going to ask you, actually, do you stick to a specific focal length after all this planning? Or once you're there on set, do you find a little bit of leeway of, oh, I think maybe a... 50 or 85 or, you know, a different um, angle is better for this uh, scene. I don't really think of the lens before the shoot. <laughs> mm-hmm, it, mm-hmm. It, it's more the, it's more the location and the setup and the costumes and the, what I'm trying to create. And the technical bit comes much later. Mm-hmm. I know that I'm, I need to bring in enough lighting to create what I'm trying to achieve. And then, but very often I will, um, but you're right about that, that I will often recce an image beforehand, but not normally with the camera that I will shoot. It's Mm -hmm. just generally just snaps with my Sony camera. Mm -hmm. And then I will bring in my more, um, well, I wouldn't say more professional, but my Hasselblad. And Mm then always, I always shoot from a tripod. And once the Mm -hmm. camera is on the tripod, I don't actually look through the camera again. So I, oh. I attach the camera, it's it's tethered to a laptop and then the laptop is attached to a much bigger screen and I'll look at that. So it nearly is like a director. I won't mm-hmm. really, I'll look at the screen, but I won't, you know, how a DOP looks through the camera the whole time. I won't do that because the camera is already set in place mm-hmm. and um, it doesn't, it never moves. Uh, once I've got my my camera position, that's it. It's locked down, and then we move forward. Then we build the set mm-hmm. around uh, the scene, and I place my actors or models in the scene according to where the camera is. I love that. It it, it really does remind me of the filmmaking process, and it's it's interesting to hear from from your end because uh, with filmmakers, the idea of Having a team, having a set, the storyboard, the whole process, getting to that point, to me is beautiful, and I, I love it too. And so, I wanted to know from you: when you are leading these teams or whatnot, do you have, let's say, a 
specific workflow or a, a process that's uh, you know written out in a system, or uh, do you have um, basically it depends on the project that uh, it, each project requires a different set amount of work or or processes. For example, when I go and do the rec and I go and look at the location, I'll take my first assistant with me mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I will discuss with him how I want it to look and where I like the light to be and what light shape we will use. Mm-hmm. And then um, together we'll, we'll work on a lighting list or I'll do it on my own, whatever. I mean, I've, you know, I could do it with or without him. Uh, and then separately, I work uh, very closely with a prop stylist. So the prop mm-hmm. stylist will go out and source all take photographs of many props and I'll then choose which ones are the right ones for the shoot. Is this answering the right question? Is yeah, it is. It is. Okay. It is. I think okay. it's the process is like, I think yeah. I, was, I was asking, is it the same process each time or is it a different process depending on the, on the subject matter? It's pretty much the same process process. Nice. The only thing that was very different was when I photographed the blind people, I let them control their background. Mm. So I actually photographed the blind people in a studio and um, it's funny because at the beginning of our conversation, you were saying I don't use much retouching or post-production. But with this particular project, I did uh, on purpose because I wanted them to choose the background that they can relate to, that they feel the most comfortable in or what they what they like to see as their background. And unfortunately, most of them say said being by the seaside because that's mm. where... I think everybody likes to go to because it's there's so many different senses. Oh, I can hear uh, the ocean can, and smell. Yeah, yeah, the smell, the sound, the the, the, the sand under their feet. You know, they're all kind of the sea, the sea. I'm like, no, no, you've oh. got to think of something else. <laughs> <laughs> the sea is a background. So mm. that that was quite interesting because they controlled the background, and then I would mm-hmm. go and photograph the background first. Um, the location first, and then I photographed them in the studio and made it look like they were in the location. Um, but there's something quite odd about the images because there's quite a large depth of field, so mm-hmm. you know, they're quite close to the camera. Um, it doesn't the, the background doesn't fall out of focus. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So there's something strange that the backgrounds in focus, they're in focus, and the images are quite muted. So this, that gives that sense of them not being able to see see that well and um wow so that was a little that was a little bit out of my control and that was a little bit tricky and a little bit difficult to achieve because it's it wasn't my how you know i need to make a a field look really interesting Mm -hmm. um but it was interesting i really enjoyed that that process I was really, I was really good to hear that. I love how you said having a really deep depth of field and having everything in focus shows how someone who is blind isn't able to tell depth through vision. And 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 funny enough, like we think that maybe it's out of focus, but maybe it is, and it everything is in focus because of their senses. So they hear more, they can perceive more. I really enjoy our conversation, Julia, especially. Yeah, me too. Only during this time, because you know, we can always go into um, your your photography work and whatnot. And honestly, the, your your creative process is just amazing. I think people actually would love to hear that over, of course, your accolades. I mean, you have you've won so many awards. You've won and you've got so many great uh, articles about you. Your work's featured everywhere, and I think it's very inspiring for artists, photographers, even filmmakers, and artists and creatives like myself. And to hear you go through the creative process and how you get go through it, it's actually motivating me uh, to explore um, the idea of uh, finding several, I would say, topics online that really move me and mm-hmm. speaking on it, especially this mm. day and age. I mean, COVID-19, whatever is ha- what's happening right now is going down in the history books. It's just like the uh, 2007, 2008 crash, um, 9-11. I mean, just a lot of global, uh, uh, I would say, adjustments or crises that have affected us personally, economically, uh, mentally. And so I think all of us being indoors, you know, in, in, in your mind, how have you, I mean, you've only been there for like two, probably two days. How has it affected yeah. you? 
create um, <laughs> like professionally and creatively has it have your projects been pushed I mean, like working projects like pay commissions and whatnot yeah, well, yes. I mean, I had a couple of... One wasn't confirmed yet, but that was a trip mm. to New York um, doing a shoot for Airbnb. Um, I knew I was kind of favorite photographer and, you know, we were very much talking and uh, the next stage was writing the treatments. Treatment. I, oh, no, actually, I think I wrote a treatment. Did I write a treatment? Anyway, I can't remember. <laughs> um <laughs> And then it was kind of, no, no, we can only use now local. This was three kind of, as everything was starting to shift and the lock, it was, it was before the lockdown. Uh, people were still flying and, um, but it was very much like, okay, we, we really don't think you could fly over here. Um, we, we need to work with someone who, who's very local. Mm. But then I heard a week later that they just had to can the whole shoot. Yeah. Um, then I had another shoot and they just kind of canceled everything that was meant to be in a studio in London. And, um, but they, it was a week before we went to do the shoot and they paid some cancellation fee, which, which was nice of them. Nice, um, nice. And, and then it was my personal shoot that I, I, I was planning for, it wasn't a big one. It was just a small shoot that I was planning for the last three months and everything was ready to go. And I actually put the whole shoot forward. I thought, okay, we will have a lockdown because this is happening. You know, it, it was just happening in France. We saw it happening mm -hmm. in Italy, Spain. It already ha was happening in China. And I just thought, okay, this is coming our way. Um, mm -hmm. This is this is also the weird thing that you just see, you know what's going to happen because it's happened to all the other countries. Yeah. Um, and I tried to move the shoot forward by week. And then it was, I just had to pull the plug two, two days before. And it's a shame because you, you're excited by it. Everything's ready, you know, every, mm -hmm. everything's booked. And then you've got to, it, it took me all day to unbook everything, you know, yeah. to cancel everything, you know, the equipment and the van hire, little things, you know, just contact all the actors, models and the whole team and, it's a shame because yeah. everybody's very excited. Um, but, you know, we, we've got to respect what's going on. And I think, I think we're safe. Like our children and people our age are probably safe. It's the, the elderly and those who are, don't have the strong immune system or mm -hmm. they're already ill. And those are the ones we have to protect. And yeah. we have to go through this to, I keep saying to everybody, we're all in this together. And we will come out on the other side. Um, mm -hmm. I think we have difficult times coming ahead. I think it's for us, as I say, it's very, very new. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm actually following, uh, do you know the singer, songwriter Rufus Wainwright? Yeah, I do. Okay. So on Instagram, he's doing a song once a day. Oh, that's beautiful. And I, I love, I love the guy. I love listening to him. And his um, husband is filming it. And you see a little glimpse of his living room and he's sitting there in his robe. <laughs> and he's checking to the camera. It's all very relaxed style. And he goes, today's a bit gray weather. And it just lifts, our, lifts my spirits. You know, mm. it's kind of, thank God, for, thank you for doing this. And um, it's the little things that matter now that you normally just wouldn't even notice. But mm -hmm. we might sing a song for us every day. And we can chat to him on Instagram and he replies. Um, wow. And he hasn't replied to me yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> but but it's, still. It, you know, and I've introduced him to my boys and we're all sitting there together and, you know, it's, it's lovely. And it's, you know, it's also home educating our children now because obviously they're not going to school and we've got to get a routine going. And um, I think what we set the routine we set this week we'll have for months. So we're being probably a bit more strict than we should be, mm. you know, you know, starting start, we start at nine o'clock. We finish at three thirty, four o'clock and we, 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 we have the breaks in between and we, you know, they can get a bit lazy and not, they don't want to go outside even though it's nice weather, but it's important to um, keep exercising and moving and yeah. get oxygen into your lungs and just keep moving and going and, do as much do do as much as you can because you know you we have contact with family and friends but we're not going to see them for a while. Yeah, 
it's it's a it's a strange time of people having to of course stay home but also figure out how to make this an interesting and not boring time and making use of the time effectively and also um i would say with more self awareness because i think um we could get incredibly distracted like i i myself have had moments of two or three hours of search, researching coronavirus news. Mm. And instead of, oh, you, I could have used those two or three hours mm. working on a script or mm-hmm. editing this video that I did last week. And I think that uh, it's, it's a test of patience, of discipline, willpower, um, and also connection as well. I think the, yeah. the, the idea of always being connected to somehow to someone somehow and like you said you know like Rufus Wainwright uh, a lot of artists right now are doing the live streams per day Mm -hmm. because those same artists that we that we see you know on tv and they're out in concerts they have to stay home too yeah (laughs) so it's reduced everyone to normal citizens even their biggest uh artists and so now we get to see our artists at home what do they do? And what are they doing? And they can't go to the office. So you know what? I'm a creative. So let's do um, a live, you know, DJ session or whatnot. Um, And so it's, it's really cool to see creatives getting even more creative. Um, At the same time, I think, but it's interesting what you said that you spent three hours reading about the coronavirus. I still think it's important also not to, I think people will, uh, should I put it, not to also feel you have to be creative. I think mm-hmm, this is a part mm-hmm. where survival is the wrong word, but I think people are still adjusting. And yes. every day the news is changing and every day we're having tighter restrictions. And some people are on their own, completely at, at home alone. And some people are living with their family and therefore can share that easier um, I'm grateful at the moment that I've got husband and kids that I, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not doing this on my own, but there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of young people who are living by themselves and they can't meet with their friends and yeah. they're used to that social life of, you know, going They're either the students or they have jobs and then they go out in the evenings and they rely on that social life. And I think mm-hmm. I'm worried for some people that they can hit a really deep, depression because of being isolated because we're so used to being and sharing and being with people. It's very different doing it over email or um, over the phone. Whereas, you know, people are used to just being together in groups or as couples. And I, I worry where that's how, how long this will last and how long people have to do this for. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I think, you know, I'm used to working at home. For, for me, it hasn't, well, it's only been two days. So for me, nothing much has changed so far. I can still walk to the shop. I just have to queue and there's a distance between us all. And they're only letting five people into this big supermarket. Mm. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah. Which is good. They're taking, but then you've got a lot of people queuing outside. But yeah. it's, it's, people are taking their precautions. You can still walk along the river. Most of the, um, the big parks are closed, but you can still go to a park and we've got amazing weather and the birds are singing and all the blossoms are coming out and it's springtime. Sounds lovely. <laughs> it is beautiful. But I th- I fear that, you know, people will get depressed and mm-hmm. feel incredibly isolated and lonely. And that's where it's really important to to somehow reach out. So I'm wondering what I can do. Like maybe I'm going to, mm. I mean, maybe I'm going to, do a, a post where, you know, if people want to, I'll happily do portfolio reviews or mm. help students, photography students, if they want to show me their work or where they want to go with their careers. Because that's something that I sometimes do is portfolio reviews for mm-hmm. universities or I give talks. And, you know, I think it's also using this time to help other people. And therefore, if you're not, I feel that if you're not doing your own creative stuff right now, I think that's okay. I think that's okay too. Yeah. Because if, yeah. people, if people start putting themselves, because I'm speaking from my experience as well, if people start putting themselves under pressure that this is the time they should be producing something because 
there's a lot of downtime. I read something the other day um, about the war, the First World War and Second World War, is that what did people have to do when they went out to war? They had to fight. And what do we have to do in this war? Because it is a bit like a war. We have to just sit on our couch and wait for the storm to pass, right? Yes. It's kind of like, what do we have to do? It's just, we can just laze about. I mean, it's not a war, but it is, it's, you could, some people describe it as that because it's, yeah. you know, we're being told what to do. There's, there's a little bit of military stuff that might be happening soon. I don't know if you guys have that is. Yeah. But we have military happen. coming in. Yeah, we have threats of the military are coming in and they're going to control the streets. I don't know if you, you have that. It's, it's getting close. I mean, there's a lot of, of course, um, news outlets talking about military trucks and army trucks in New York. I know that Gavin Newsom asked for the National Guard to come to La, Los Angeles and California. And it's, I would say, the idea of the war uh, it's it's true. I've, and I've seen that, move, that meme. The meme is funny. Like it's the mm-hmm. our grandparents were asked to go to war. We're being asked to sit, yeah. to sit on the couch. So yeah. do your part. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we, we have it easy. I, yeah. Get a life. Get a grip. You yeah. know. And I think the. It's gonna be um, okay. <laughs> I, I I totally agree with you with the idea of um, loneliness going to be a mm-hmm. large issue and depression and isolation. And I think that it is up to people like us, and I think just people in general to reach out. And the idea of just reaching out through digital without human touch or Mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, just uh, physical presence will have some damaging effects for some people. I think most people. So I think that even if you is going outside and being, being just around people, even if it's six feet or more, it's, I think, refreshing. Um, Yeah. It's almost uh, giving someone a, a sense of community rather than being alone inside digitally, uh, being connected to people. So it, it is a time where I do agree with you. We, I, I don't want to be forced to be creative. And I, I kind of feel that everyone's like, you got to be creative. You got to produce something. Take advantage of the situation. And I think it's a balance. It really is a balance of uh, reflecting, of preparing of taking action, studying, connecting, and also just making sure that the things that you do uh, have a purpose behind it. And if there is the purpose of this is to rest and heal, awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I spent the whole I spent the whole weekend mm-hmm. watching movies, mm-hmm. and I can't believe I'm going to say this. I was playing video games. I haven't mm-hmm. done that in years, <laughs> in years. And yeah. I think my body told me. I think you have burnt yourself out and Mm. you are allowed to play video games for a day. We are so used to running like a hamster on a wheel, like Mm -hmm. life is so busy, you know, and this is the time when people could just calm down and, as you say, reflect on their lives and also on their future. What, what, Mm -hmm. what, What do people want to do in the future? Do they want to change their careers? Do they want to do... You know, this is time of thinking and reflecting. And um, if there are days, I know we all feel under pressure, we need to be achievers and be producing something or hmm. creating something. I certainly f- often feel like that, but I, it's just good to talk about this because I think if there are days where you haven't done much, I think that's okay too. In fact, hmm. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to clean out my garage and my loft because it's such a mess. <laughs> <laughs> And I never have time for that. And it's a little bit like shedding your skin, isn't it? Mm-hmm, when you mm-hmm. do, a, do a clean out and um, unfortunately all the dumps are closed. So I don't know where I'm going to chuck it all. <laughs> <laughs> all the recycling places are closed and all the charity shops. I'll just have to keep it. Oh my gosh, really? Keep, keep it somewhere and then get rid of it later. But you yeah. Know, you know, it, it's, I'm glad you say that because even the, the, uh, I said it in a post yesterday that limitations breeds or births innovation. There's going to be a lot of innovative things coming out of this. But at the same time, I think for you to fix and clean your home, it, it happened to me too. I, I'm cleaning left and right. I think that it actually gives us, it gives, the, it gives time to the things that we've been putting off in, mm-hmm. that are you know, necessary. I mean, cleaning your loft and your garage is necessary. And the 
funny enough, I bet you anything while you're doing that, you're going to be in the moment and an idea is going to pop out of nowhere. I think <laughs> so too. I think so too. I think it's going to <laughs> pop out and you're going to say, I should be cleaning my whole house. I'm, I'm re-roofing. We need new floors. <laughs> um, but Julie, I don't want to take any more of your time. Like it's, it's great that we've actually talked this long and um, just wanted to say thank you for this conversation. It was really uh, interesting for me to get into the whole idea of being at home and dealing with the uh, self, shelter in place and lockdown, but also learning more about you and your work. And just want to acknowledge you with your work and what you put out and how much you inspire people and also your workflow, your creative workflow has inspired me. And I, uh, I am looking into, I'm going to start looking into just more issues online that I can speak on with my art. Um, mm. So uh, thank you. Um, thank you. I, re- I really enjoyed it. And it was, uh, it was really, yeah, really lovely speaking to you. Yeah. And so before you know, we go, can you just let us know where to find you and how we can support? Okay. So uh, my website is www.juliafullerton-batten.com. Mm-hmm. Maybe I should spell that out, do you think? Yeah, you can spell it out. And I'll also, I'll also include it in the description, but you can spell it out. Okay, J-U-L-I-A-F-U-L-L-E-R-T-O-N-B-A-T-T-E-N.com. Nice. I'm also, awesome. I'm also on Instagram. Oh, you I have to be. I, I've seen yeah. your work on Instagram. It's you're you're it's incredible. Everyone, please follow on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> but Julia, thank you so much. I hope the rest of your day or evening is lovely, and I hope that the loft and garage is spotless <laughs> by tomorrow. No, two days. Oh, you take care. Look after yourself. <laughs> you too. For the next stay following s- weeks and months. <laughs> yeah, stay self and safe and healthy. Thank you. You too. Right, thank you. Bye oh, bye. Thank you for listening to the Creative Haven podcast. And if you dig it and like what you heard today, please give us a nice review and rating and share it with one of your friends that you think needs some creative inspiration. You can always find more content and resources at thecreativehaven.com and hit me up on Instagram at Mitchell Doomlau. And if you want to reach out, collab, or ask any questions, you have my permission to slide into my DMs. So keep positive, continue to learn and hone your craft and create all day. Salamat.